would you define technical onboarding and why is it so important? So first, let me just explain what onboarding is. Um, employee onboarding is taking someone from outside of the company, outside of the team, and making them a productive, independent, confident member of the team. Technical onboarding is the considerations around specifically onboarding employees that have a technical skill set. So I'm a software engineer, and when you onboard new software engineers, there's usually extra training that has to happen. Um, we have internal processes at many companies that are, um, they shouldn't be difficult to learn, but they are. Um, the reality is that the process is pretty complex for how we ship code. And so putting together training programs and onboarding programs for engineers requires special consideration and more effort for many companies. Well, that makes sense. And you note in a talk that it's often overlooked. Why is that? I think it's rarely prioritized. I mean, every company has a lot to do. And onboarding employees, it's unclear how much that adds to the business value. I think when people think about it conceptually, the return on investment is incredibly high, though. Having a productive, high-functioning team is invaluable. And onboarding helps with things like attrition, and it helps with the productivity of the actual team. So you actually save yourself a lot of money, and you utilize the money that you're already spending on employees. So when companies do put in place onboarding programs, they really see the benefits. But for a lot of companies, it's hard before they have an onboarding program in place for them to really go, oh yes, this is hugely valuable and hugely important to our company. I mean, there's a million things that, that people at companies are dealing with. Right, and what are some uh, onboarding best practices that you would recommend? Um, so I have an entire talk kind of on the philosophy behind onboarding and a blog post for people who don't like to watch talks. Um, best practices are around kind of focusing on three major categories for a person. There's the technical skill set that they need to do their job. We tend to overemphasize this, but pretty much everything is learnable today with the internet. So if you need to learn a specific programming language, if you're a designer and you need to learn a new tool, um, that's kind of your technical skill set. There's the company knowledge and process. This is hugely important to the effectiveness of an employee day to day. It's often something too that companies are very bad at documenting. And so every new employee has to come in and navigate this really confusing set of internal processes and hierarchies and, and um, just documenting that and having a really learnable system for people to get up to speed on your own company's processes is huge. And then the final one is personal development. So making sure that you're helping people be confident, um, making sure that people have access to the resources that they need to um, move ahead at their job. That's really, really important for onboarding employees and also all throughout their career. People aren't going to stay at companies where they don't feel like they have upward trajectory or they don't feel like they're growing. And onboarding is the first part of making sure people have all of those things. Sure, sure. And shifting gears just a little bit, you recently took on the question of hiring diversity, looking at data from CodePath. Can you share a little bit about what you found in that data? Yeah. Um, so I've uh, talked to a lot of companies about bringing on more diverse teams. Um, and one of the pushbacks that you often get is, well, we want to hire more diversity, but we don't want to lower the bar. And that is one of those delightful phrases where when you hear it, you kind of you kind of go, OK, the assumption there is that you would have to lower the bar, that for some reason women or people of color are less good at programming than the right. existing group. And you're just like, that's not, that's not right. And so my goal with the article was to find some, some data uh, you know, where there were enough um, different people going through the program that we could actually analyze it. So my hypothesis, of course, is that there is no difference between the sure. performance of these different groups. Um, computers are great because they don't care what you look like. And um, that's what we found. And CodePath is a, it's a training program. They go out to a bunch of different companies. So I think Facebook has used them. Um, and they have a bunch of different classes on like iPhone programming and different things. And so they have a really diverse set of students, um, diverse both in terms of you know, gender and race, but also in terms of what colleges they went to and where they are in the US. And so we looked at a bunch of different factors to see if there was any difference in their top 18% of performers and the overall breakdown of their students. And there wasn't. There is no statistically significant difference between the performance um, of women versus men. There wasn't enough data for certain 
certain racial groups, but there's also no st statistically significant difference in the performance across the races that had large enough pools of people. And so the idea that you would have to lower the bar to higher diversity is, is an incorrect assumption. Um, if you have 5% of a certain group coming through your recruiting pipeline and you are hiring less than 5%, there is a problem with your recruiting pipeline. It is biased. Um, it's not to say that you have to somehow magically make your team 50% women and 50% men if only 20% of the people interviewing at your company are women. But if you are interviewing 20% women and you are hiring 15, you have a problem. Um, and that's, that's kind of what that whole thing is about. Right. And last question for you. What people or projects are you following? Um, so I, I am a Python developer, so I follow a lot of the projects in the Python community. So Flask, the requests library. Um, I don't use a lot of products myself, actually. Mark Benioff, the CEO of Salesforce, is my new favorite person on Twitter because he's one of the few tech leaders whose thoughts I actually want to hear. Um, yeah, and then I would say I have a pretty diverse set of people I follow on Twitter, and I really like that. And so um, Erica Joy from Slack talks a bunch about diversity, and Anwan Simmons is a speaker I've seen talk, and he's great. And so those are the people I like to follow. All right, well, thank you very much for talking with me today. Yeah.